Hey everyone, it's Blake here with ChessPathways.com, and today we're going to be talking about the English opening. The English opening begins with white playing this move c4 on move 1, grabbing some central space with this pawn, and deciding not to commit their two most central pawns right away. One thing to understand about the English opening is that there's a lot of transpositions that can occur into a queen's pawn opening, or sometimes even a king's pawn opening. For example, after knight to f6, if white were to play d4 here, this is just a queen's pawn opening. This is the same as if white had played a d4 here on move 1, and you get the very typical knight f6, c4 position here uh, from the queen's pawn opening. So it's just good to know that that option exists, but in this video, we're going to be mostly focusing on lines that are unique to the English opening that can't be reached through those other openings. And we're going to start by looking at this move e5 black can play, a very popular move here, grabbing some space in the center with the king's pawn. And this is often called the reversed Sicilian, because it looks very much like a Sicilian defense with reversed colors at first glance. The Sicilian defense, of course, being uh, e4, c5. But not all the similarities are going to be here in this position here. Black is going to be less inclined to go for the most aggressive options that white usually has in the Sicilian defense, for the simple reason that black is down a tempo compared to a Sicilian defense with white. White will often play knight c3. Let's say black plays knight to f6, very normal developing moves. White likes to fianchetto this bishop a lot in this uh, this opening here, putting it on this diagonal where it can easily coordinate with this c pawn to really control that d5 square very well. And black has several choices here. Black can certainly play d5, and we're kind of going for a Sicilian dragon with reversed colors now, where white has the fianchettoed kingside bishop instead of black. Uh, bishop b4 is another popular move here for black simply uh, adding some pressure to this knight. It's kind of analogous to the Sicilian defense line where white plays bishop b5 early on. So we can take a look at this. Let's say white plays bishop g2. Black goes ahead and gets castled. And now white plays knight f3, adding some pressure to this pawn and finishing up their kingside development as well. And it's often going to be tough for black to just push this pawn and attack that knight. Because, for example, after e4, knight g5, there's a lot of pressure on this e4 pawn with the knights and the bishop here, and because of this c pawn here, it's not so easy for black to just play d5 and uh, solidify that pawn with another pawn. So black will often not play that move, at least not right away. Instead, they can defend it with knight c6. White can go ahead and castle. And now black sometimes plays e4 here. Also, rook e8 is a very popular move, just adding more support to this pawn, possibly playing e4 later. White could just play d3 here, though, to stop black from playing e4 and uh, opening the path for this bishop. And now that that d-pawn is moved, black will often take the opportunity to kind of wreck white's pawn structure here. And because that knight is gone, black would now be allowed to play e4. So again, kind of similar to the Sicilian defense analogous line here, white has the, the bishop pair here against the bishop and knight, which could certainly be useful later on, especially if the center gets opened up. Uh, both kings are very safe, but black's hoping that the wrecked white pawn structure here with the doubled pawns is going to give them an advantage in the long term. There's also the symmetrical English, which is when black plays c5 here, and at first glance this often leads to some very uh, boring copycat games, let's say knight c3, knight c6, knight f3, knight f6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, castle, castle. The position's very uh, fixed here in the center, so the moves uh, for both sides are probably going to be the same. If a move is good for white to make, it's probably also good for black to make. But eventually the symmetry is going to get broken. White will often play d4 here after finishing development and create pawn tension for the first time. And if black does not take that pawn, white might push forward with d5 and grab a space advantage. So black could play c takes d4, knight takes d4. That's one very popular line. White kind of maintains the sole pawn in the center here for now, and white's bishop gets opened up. So white might have a slight advantage here but the black position is, of course, very solid. Or black does not have to exchange after d4. Black will sometimes just play d6 to reinforce this pawn, allowing white to play d5 and kick that knight. But this knight can actually come to a5, immediately attacking this c4 pawn. And black might be able to fight back here on the queen side, which is where their pawn chain's pointing, if black can get in this b5 pawn break eventually, trying to split up those white pawns. Also, by pushing d5, white has blocked the diagonal of this bishop, so that's another thing that black has going for him, despite the fact that white now has a space advantage. This pawn structure here is actually more reminiscent of lines from the King's Indian or the Benoni, as opposed to the English opening, but they did begin with c4, c5. Which is yet another example of, if you're going to play the English defense, 
it pays off to have knowledge of a lot of different openings because we're seeing how often they can transpose into different opening systems. Let's consider some other uh, first moves here for black and see how the game can progress. Uh, one popular move is c6 for black, uh, intending to play d5 next turn. This is well known from the Slav defense and the Karo Khan defense. And indeed, uh, either of those openings could be the result here. If white plays d4, black is probably happy to enter a Slav defense with d5. And white can sometimes even play e4 here, and this leads to a Karo Khan line after e4, c6, c4, when black plays d5 here, uh, leading to uh, either the Panov or the pseudo Panov. Uh, those are variations of the Karo Khan. But if white doesn't want to do that, if they want to keep the game in English opening territory, white can play knight f3, and after d5, white has a couple options here if they want to keep their sinful pawns flexible and not really commit to playing d4 right away. Some very strong players here have played b3 against me when I've tried this setup as black, uh, just simply reinforcing the c-pawn and preparing to fianchetto the bishop here to b2. So the game might continue knight f6, bishop b2, bishop f5, developing that bishop. White can play e3 and open the path for their other bishop. e6, bishop e2. Again, kind of in the true spirit of the English opening, white's just keeping those central pawns flexible for now. White might play d4 later if they can get kind of a, a favorable version of a symmetrical queen's pawn opening that they like. But white's also reserving the right to maybe play d3 and e4 later. That's also a, a, a popular plan here to play d3, bring a knight to d2, and help reinforce this e4 break later on. Maybe even with the help of a rook on the e-file after white gets castled. So that's one option here. Also after c4, c6, uh, white will sometimes play knight f3, d5, and simply uh, sacrifice this pawn. Play a move like g3 here. And it won't be easy for black to hold on to this pawn. For example, after knight f6, bishop g2... If black decides to accept this sacrifice and takes d takes c4, white will often just calmly finish development and play castles here, and white will sometimes follow up with a move like knight a3, simply attacking the c4 pawn, and if black ever tries to play b5 and defend it, that really weakens this diagonal where this bishop's very strong. Uh, for example, I'll show a line, let's say knight b to d7 is played here, white could play knight a3, and if black did choose to play b5 here, which is probably not a great idea, White could simply play knight to d4, and the c6 pawn is attacked twice. Uh, white's threatening to, uh, to take on b5 because of the pins here along the diagonal, and this would not be so great here for black. Their queenside pawn structure is going to fall apart. So that's another way white can play here to kind of keep those central pawns flexible, just immediately fianchetto that bishop and finish up development, and not be too concerned that black might try to win that pawn here on c4. White's probably going to be able to get it back or get good compensation. Black has many other ways to play as well. But many of them can be best understood by this kind of overarching theme in the English opening, which is that white's not committing those central pawns yet. White might transpose to another opening, depending on what black does, but white also has some original lines as well. For example, let's say black plays f5. White could, of course, go into the Dutch defense by playing d4. That's a queen's pawn opening. But white could also choose not to do that, remain flexible, and maybe try to play for a setup with d3 and e4 later on, as we've already looked at. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please make sure you sign up at chesspathways.com. I'll send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you sign up, and it's totally free. So don't miss out on all of our exclusive content and contests, and make sure you get signed up right now at chesspathways.com. Thanks, and I'll see you there.